All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Uh, awesome stuff here in the trading room lately. And again, I talked about this uh, over the weekend. I did a video on stopping out, uh, how to stop out like a pro, and mentally dealing with it. And um, just to kind of like go off on a, a side note here again, seven for seven to start the week in the trading room. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of good levels here are hitting on both sides of the tape here. So again, if you guys got any sort of time or any interest in day trading, I highly encourage you to come join us here uh, four for four today in the room. We also had members, I didn't even get into this one, but we had members in, in NVIDIA this morning. We called that out in the pre-market and um, major inverse head and shoulders here gap up it held the gap and then huge surge so that should be getting up to the 118 handle to the measured move and then up into that gap there but anyways awesome market here for day trading lately so anyways let's get into it here um so markets today with a massive move uh really on both sides i talked about this yesterday was it a red flag uh when you close at the highs of the day right without taking out resistance Right, I've seen this before, and well, we had a pretty good sell, right? Um, just about a hundred points, you know, just a casual hundred point drop in the first hour to hour and uh, you know, not even ninety minutes, and then look at this V shape, hundred and fifty points, uh, just shy of that, rather like a hundred. Oh, sorry, only a hundred and thirty points, you know, off of the lows here, and then now into these pivots up here. There is some Gex at fifty. I mean, it'd be funny if they went up there and got this, uh, but there is Gex at uh, fifty. 550 right now there's some calls at 5540 so it's probably about all we get for the day but either way um amazing level to level action here um on both sides of the tape right now and a uh, great market for trading now where are we right now i'm going to get rid of 5500 because it's going to mess up the you know it's visually hard to see this is we're going to close above it anyway so but this right here um 55 22 spot 47 we're above that and, and barring a massive drop here in the next 10 minutes um, we should close above that. So that gives me a buy the dip bias kind of moving forward here because we're going to negate that inside bar pattern. That is a failure. And, um, you know, it sucked in anybody who is short down in. I love these types of candles here um, on the daily. I, I would call it a test candle, but it's it's kind of not um, really what a test candle to me is when you, when you have like a big tail, then you close near the highs, which is technically what we're doing. But Usually it's with a doji and this is with a, an outside, you know, body. It's kind of similar to this day right here um, where we had that long tail and then a close back up. Try to think of there's a better example. There's a, there's a good example I'll show you later on Bitcoin actually um, of what I would call a tusk candle. But either way, um, you know, we're above this. We have PPI tomorrow and um, we'll see what we get there. We might get a choppy range because we had a um, obviously kind of like a, I wouldn't call it a trend day, but we had a, a big move and a lot of the time when you have a big move you can get um kind of cool off mode again 130 point rally in a very short period of time so we might cool off a little bit but cpi coming in just a little bit uh, hotter than expected just barely and we can saw that did move the bond market um i think a lot of bond again i still think the market's off sides here um, and you can see here yields closing up seven cents on the tnx i don't know looks a little bottom heavy right here and it seems to me that the market's just not ready or not expecting that there's a chance that yields could go the other way. And um, I think there is, if nothing else, other than a positioning move. But um, that did kind of help the market out here. So again, yes, yields inching up. Yes, uh, is inflation going up bad? Uh, yeah, but in, in the near term, it could be seen as, well, the economy is not collapsing, right? And that's more of the important thing right now. That's what the market really cares about. And we're seeing that big surge here. Also, um, I noticed this this morning, right off the bat, called this out in the trading room and I even tweeted about this too. Look at SMH on the way down, right? Look at the sell there versus the sell in the spiders, right? Big move down. Look at XLV, right? Defensive, 
XLP, XLU, these were down big this morning. They did come back by the end of the day, but defensive down. Banks were down big, but semis, we know the semis are such a good leading indicator. There's a reason why I talk about them every day very extensively. And I've been doing that for years, not just lately since it's been a semiconductor, you know, bull market, but always semi is important. Outperformance that told us that, you know, this was probably some type of a shakeout move here. And it felt like a shakeout too. It was very contrived here. I was really looking for us to get to 5,400. We didn't quite get there. We got so close. I um, was really waiting for that to buy. And um, that would have been a monster move. I mean, we still made some nice trades today, but that would have been even a better one. But 540 on SPY was a big level too um, for ODTEs. And um, obviously you can see that help. But my point is uh, NVIDIA this morning, gap up, retest, you know, kind of pierce of that neckline on the hourly and we never close below it. And that did push higher. Broadcom up 7% big move there for avgo uh tsm up 4.65 amd up five percent so semiconductors showing strength what does it feel like it feels almost like put dk on tech specifically mag 7 look at amazon today outside move up beautiful action there netflix up nicely um even google which has been weak lately up one and a half microsoft up two percent tesla uh marching higher here and uh, apple up one and a quarter Feels like call D, or excuse me, put decay on mag seven and semiconductors. And it almost feels like call decay on uh, defensives. Granted, XLU is up, um, XLP down, XLF down. Although it does have a nice tail candle here, and the volume coming in again. I talked about this yesterday. You know, we couldn't even close below the twenty MA, um, and today we're holding the fifty. So almost feels like kind of a reversal here and the market may get supported a little bit as we get into OPEX. So potentially, I don't know, look for the Q's to outperform over the next week or so. And right now, I mean, shit, we're about to take out, I mean, we're about 468.38. We'll take you into the close here and we'll see if we can get, um, stay above that. Let me just get that exact. So 46838, that would be reclaiming that green bar there. But either way, a really nice outside move here and just amazing volatility. Love this market, love the trading uh, action right now. The big question is, do we make a higher high? Do we make a new all-time high? Um, again, anything's possible. I, obviously the odds, I would have said, went down last Friday by negating that green. But now you've negated the negation, right? So it's kind of like a little complicated, but we've negated that breakdown bar. There's still gonna be resistance at you know 55.70. Right, so right around these pivots 55, 60, 55, 70, 5600, whole round number, and then 50, of course. Um, by the way, look at the four hour on the ES here. That, what a ridiculous <laughs> that's what I would call a test candle, right? So a big slice down and then a hammer, right? So, and I'll just look at that outside move, unreal. Yeah, we're still marching up right now as we get close to the end of the day here. But yeah, there's 5550, so there you go. That's why I love using this tool here. So amazing stuff. But um, the question is, is, do we make a higher high or not? If we do, I don't think it's by that much. Again, I, I guess you could say 5700 is back on the table. Um, and we'll see what we get tomorrow. I mean, maybe PPI reverses this, I don't think so. But um, yeah, amazing action here. So we'll leave it at that for now. We'll take it one day at a time, but. Awesome stuff. Uh, Q's up 2.18%. Even the Russell managing to gain uh, 31 basis points currently. Down move, tempted bear flag, and now we're back inside. So the Russell may get a little bit of a bid here. Again, still got to get through 210, 21050. But uh, good move there for IWM coming off the lows. It looked ugly this morning. Dow, look at that big uh, shakeout candle. All the way down to 400 and right back up. And again, back above the 20 DMA. SMH, we talked about good candle, good bounce. They said, watch out for that, what? Higher low at the 200 MA. And that's happening. I did not play that, but I said that was obviously a possibility. Socks up 5%. IGV, um, that's my tech champion here, up 1.17. And um, yeah, nice pattern. So, I mean, really all this is just another bull flag. Right. And you guys know I love the monthly. So IGV, nice action there, up one in uh, 1.2. Dow transfer, that's a test candle. Sucked in all the shorts, then closed back inside. 
So good action here for a lot of a lot of things here. Um, Bitcoin, that's a test candle, right? Very nice. We'll talk about Bitcoin in a second or a little bit later, as we always do. Uh, yields here up on the two year. Uh, by the way, um, rate cut odds are now 85 percent for uh, 25. The market's surging right now as we get to the close here, by the way. Um, but rate cut odds are uh, 85 percent of a 25 basis point cut. Wait a minute, Aaron, how can that how can the market be rallying? The market wanted 50 basis points. The market wanted 50 basis points. And that's like absolute nonsense, right? That's why I've been saying that stuff. By the way, take a look at the market here. Just absolutely doing a pig move right now. Look at the Vixie here. All right. But um, yeah, it's it's nonsense. The, like the only time that that's happened, the only times in that in history that that's that's happened were like um, twice in the uh, 80s. I think 70s or 80s. I, I posted it on Twitter, but basically there's only two times what happened where, where there was like a soft landing. The other like 12 were like hard landing scenarios. Market does not want 50 basis points. Don't let them don't let them fool you here. Total nonsense. But right now yields trying to hold on to the lows here. There's the bell. And um, I think they look like a little like they're getting ready for some type of a counter trend pop. So we'll see where they are by the end of the week and we'll see what PPI does tomorrow. But I think bonds are a little overextended here. Look at the cues. What is ridiculous? So four sixty eight thirty five. So it looks like we close below that by two pennies, three pennies. It's not the end of the world though. It is still a monster move. Still a monster move. And uh, right back to the twenty DMA on the SPX. So crazy stuff. All right, uh, XHB again. Test candle tried to bear flag breakdown. No follow through. Fifty MA held. Weekly inside bar is still intact. No problems with the home builders. VNQ down 19 cents, but it's still really strong. XLF, um, I survived the bear mar the bank bear market of September 10th through the 11th, I guess. Um, I, but seriously, 50 MA. And um, I think we hit a 50% FIB today. It got really close. Yeah, so right there, good bounce, finishing down 18 cents. Again, we'll see where it closes the week. Definitely, definitely some backing off though. But again, look at the weekly. There's nothing wrong with this. So I know people freak out when you know they pump shit all over CNBC, but um, it, all we did was retrace 50% of this move, and we're still above the 50 MA. Not saying it can't change, but you know, I always wait for the close too. I mean, it looked a lot worse at 10 o'clock and 10:30. Now it doesn't look so bad. Um, even KRE down 64 cents. It is weaker, notably. You are below the 50, but still came way off the lows with volume. And the same thing on KBE, KBWB. KBWB actually looks pretty good. And uh, broker dealers just can't keep them down, closing flat to positive. One thing that can be kept down is oil. Um, so that was up a dollar thirty eight today, but still, you know, it's into that level I've got marked there. But um, I don't have a signal on it yet. Um, I think this will be a massive buy at some point, and I mean a massive buy. But I don't think we're quite there yet. I'll just leave it there. I don't have a trade on it. I will say XLE did come nicely off the lows, as did XOP, possible tail candle, bottoming tail, and the OIH as well. It got down, I told you guys 260 was the next level. It got almost there. There's your weekly 200. It reacted. We'll see where it is at the end of the week. But energy stocks did come nicely off the lows. They did finish red, but they, they came nicely off the lows. So continue to monitor that. Um, CCJ, nice outside move up six. Needed that higher low. URNM, beautiful. We talked about the possibility of a W, right? And said so we need it needs to show itself, but there it is. Good move. NJ, nice. Possible false breakdown here, right? Slice the low, close below it, right back up. So good moves there for uranium. Again, maybe this, I would say this next area is probably right around that 50 MA. We're going to watch that. So daily 50 MA is kind of your next level. If it can build on that momentum, it might need to flag a little bit though. Um, that gas, still sellers still keep fighting at 228. So we were above that earlier and uh, they did push it back below, but it's not broken. It can just, I mean, it could just flag here on the four hour and then go through it. There's a lot of supply right here. 
So it might take a little bit of time, but I think buyers have the wind at their sails here. And um, I, I think dips can be bought in this if you're, if you're nimble and you know what you're doing with net gas. But 228, still that big level there, 228 to 230. Um, dollar index, again, up eight cents. Test candle, test candle. I got the, I, I'll give this the upside bias to 102, 102, 50. And uh, JPY, again, sucked in at the lows and then didn't close below. So again, I think you may be looking at, it looks just like the yield chart, doesn't it? Um, positive divergence there. Same thing on yields. So that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Why I say that we could possibly get a technical squeeze. Um, gold having a decent day, um, down $2, but again, just still inside bar. It's just taking a long time to play out though. Like a really long time. Like this, this inside bar is only 100, po no, sorry, it's only 60 points. It shouldn't take three weeks for it to play out. So that's my gripe with gold right now is it's taking way too long to get going. Sometimes if it takes too long, it can turn into a failure. Silver, um, decently up, up one and a quarter. You still have bear inside bar here though on the daily. Weekly, still very messy above the moving averages and it's consolidating. What did do good today was uh, the other pet rocks that I like are, are uh, platinum up 1.47. Back above the 200. The reason I say pet rocks is because you all know I've been pimping palladium on here for a long time. And guess what? 200 moving average decisively on volume above 1,000. So we've only had one prior close above the 200 since October of 2022. And that was right there. And that was not very convincing. This is convincing. So palladium may be getting ready here if it's not already. And this is the type of thing where it take, it just takes off and you, you blink. And a week later, it's up like, you know, 100, 150, 200 points. So um, there's the weekly. And I love the monthly, as you guys know. I've been saying this a long time. It's starting to look good. Uh, copper here, uh, higher on the day, still has a bear inside bar, though. It can fail above uh, 422.8. Simple. Um, and then Bitcoin here again. So kind of a test candle. I like how you sucked in shorts. Look at the four hour. Full inside bar. You do have a lot of, you know, work, supply to work through. But it, it's, it's trying to, to work that right now. It's trying to work it with that inside pattern. So I, I also like how you sucked in the shorts and um, you close right at back at the highs of the day, basically flat. So that's, that's pretty good. So Bitcoin holding up all right. So again, um, I give the bulls the upside bias here with that big outside move. We closed above resistance, right? Keep it simple. You close above resistance, you know, that, then you change. Um, you lose support, then it changes. But nice test candle. I like how they sucked in shorts. Good volume too. Good volume on the Qs, volume on the semis, NVIDIA inching up with volume. Um, I'm going to give that to, I'm just going to get rid of these because we don't need them. But I would say, I would just say give that the upside to 118, maybe even the, the gap, 120, call it even, right? But yeah, nice pattern here and um, good job to the Bulls. So we'll give them the buy the dip bias till tomorrow and um, possibly even into next week. But anyways, guys, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Again, you guys take care. Don't forget to come find me on carnivoretrades.com. We'll see you guys all tomorrow.